before we ran uh, the video here, Joy was saying that Advent has always been a time of regrouping as a mm -hmm. family and kind of getting our priorities right again. Kind of restarting our routine a little bit because we do mm -hmm. a little bit more purposeful evening devotions, uh, more purposeful days of celebration and fasting. So, yeah, it's a good reboot. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So before we do that, you want to talk about Thanksgiving at all? Um, <clears throat> We're in America. We do yeah. Thanksgiving. Yeah, we do Thanksgiving. We have a lot of turkey. How many turkeys we have we last do year? The, we do the traditional with turkey, dressing, all of that. I know some people are more into margaritas and fajitas on Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> some people say, well, I don't like turkey, so we're going to have margaritas and fajitas. It's like, no. I'm just teasing. You know who you are. Yeah, do that on <laughs> Arle Guadalupe. We'll talk about that. For Thanksgiving... We have turkey. We had a, how many turkeys we have last year? I was trying to think. Yeah, three. we had. I think we had four because Popeyes had a new turkey come out. We had to try that. Yeah, we did. As the well as the um, smoked turkey, we always get a smoked turkey, mm -hmm. and then a regular roasted. Your dad is always good at brining and roasting a pretty yes. amazing turkey breast. He mostly does the breast, not like a full mm -hmm. turkey. That's easier, mm -hmm. which I think I need to start doing because I don't yep. always execute a big turkey well. Right. <clears throat> but anyway, we're. Sometimes we're here. Usually we're home and have family over. But sometimes we're seeing other families, so it's good to... Yep. It's actually easier than Christmas to get together with a lot of family at Thanksgiving. So yes. I think that's the American way. You go visit everybody, and then you stay home at Christmas. Yeah. So. My, my father, I don't know if I've ever talked about this before. My dad, who is the other Dr. Marshall, has a PhD in meat science, and he's incredible... Uh, in the meat industry, he's pretty famous yeah. and well known. Makes and some very good meals around here. Yes, good... uh, I grew up raised on good meat, and uh, he has a whole system of brining the turkey, which, which is is a classic uh, tradition, especially I think New Englanders, which he yes. is from the New. Mm -hmm. uh, and he makes the area. best brown gravy, which you've learned how to make. Yes, he does. So, but, yeah. Anyway, but yeah, that's that's Thanksgiving. So then we, you know, Thanksgiving always quickly, you know, turns into Advent. And as you know, Advent is a penitential season. Uh, it goes back a long time. Uh, we see it in, I think, the 400s and the 500s. We start seeing a fasting period, a time of preparation, moving into the feast of Christmas. And yes, we do believe that our Lord Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. Uh, you can read more about that in my book, Eternal City. And there's also a shorter book, which is no longer in print. I'll probably reprint next year, called God's Birthday, Defending the Birthday of Christ on the 25th. So we really believe this is the real birthday of Jesus. And so did the early church fathers. And I found a quote that I was going to share. This is it's actually not a quote, but it, it goes back to uh, Gregory of Tours. Uh, so this is in the 5th century, so the 400s. And he said that during Advent, Catholics fasted three times per week on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And this fast prohibited the following. Meat, poultry, eggs, dairy products, cheese, fish, oil, and wine. The exception was oil and wine were allowed on Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. So the four other days. And then fish was allowed on Saturday, Sunday. So this was the early church practice. We see this being observed even in the time of Charlemagne, so around 800, by around the year 1200. So we're getting into the era of St. Francis of Assisi, St. Dominic, St. Thomas Aquinas. It's fallen into disuse. People aren't doing it. However, St. Louis, the king, St. Louis the Ninth, he was known for keeping the old school strict advent fast the one that i just described but that was kind of unique even in the 1200 so here we are in 2019 nobody does no it's anything. actually like a month long of partying for most right. people and so it's definitely a recalibration <clears throat> for us new catholics well even i think most cradle catholics probably didn't that i've known uh celebrate advent as the penitential season um yeah so and it's good to be balanced though sometimes mm -hmm. i you know we you have to kind of spread things out because you do want to do an adequate job like decorating but i mean because it's so fun i'm a decorator i like to do all that but um people really can get down on you if you do too much before yeah. you know too early but but at the same time it's also good to kind of bulk back the culture and mm -hmm. you know 
hold off a little bit, remind the kids and remind the family the purpose, you know, and get ready for it. So one of the things that you do really well, Joy, is you've you in December, Thanksgiving, December, we decorate the home, but you decorate it a little bit more winter. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. We kind of like, build up towards the actual Christmas. Yeah. There's winter stuff. and then, and then there's Christmas. Right. right. Yeah. And so, you know, I think, you know, when we put out our nativity scene, we don't have the baby Jesus in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then I guess we could, I guess we could jump and do the whole advent before we do the saints days. Yeah. Because that's the whole, we punctuate how we build up to the celebration of Christmas through the special days coming up. Right. Advent. So, we could so just jump into the calendar. yeah. So our four Sundays of Advent are special days, mm-hmm. um, but all during Advent we we have this really beautiful Advent wreath that Joy has designed. It's like <laughs> the base is sort of like uh, what is it? Well, it's really just an iron candelabra iron. holding pillars, big and candles. We tend to burn it a lot. We do Advent devotion every night, and so those little ones are fine if you do it once a week. But you'll mm-hmm. be going through lots of them if you light it every night so we do pillars that last the whole year or the whole yeah the whole season and for the men out there pillars are like candles that are yeah they're like a three inch round uh, candle and so it's a can it's a short iron candelabra that i wrap in garland Mm -hmm. and you know and it's what's great about it is it has it has pedestals uh pedestals i don't know on the four corners that hold the big pillars so we have a violet violet rose violet and then there's one that's a little bit taller in the middle that takes a white pillar yep it's like and then joy ties it. like ribbons around it and it looks really nice <laughs> <laughs> thanks dave and oh this is the other cool thing is she she has this crown like the crown of jesus that was just one of those things someone gave us uh like on a gift and then i you know it's one of those fun things you're like i think that'll fit on that candle you know so it so fits perfectly really on the designed. white pillar candle yeah. So all during Advent, that candle is covered with the crown of Jesus. And then on Christmas, we take that crown off and then we say the light of Christ. One of the youngest kid lights it and says the light of Christ. So mm-hmm. the Advent wreath is a big part of it. Now, some people, especially their traditional like Advent wreath, that's Protestant. That's Lutheran. They don't like that. So maybe we should talk about that. So Advent itself, of course, is Catholic. It goes back at least to the 400s, if not earlier. And there's some differences on the numbering. Uh, I think, I don't have the notes in front of me, but I think in the time of Gregory the Great, uh, there were five Sundays in Advent, but it got shortened to four. And so since it's a penitential se- uh, season, there's it's violet, just like Lent. But the middle Sunday, the third Sunday, means you're almost halfway there. It's called Gadete, which is from the introit of the Mass, Rejoice. And that's a day of, of more celebration and levity. So this was always kept in the churches. You had the four Sundays uh, and, the, and the rose-colored gaudete. What happened is, is in Germany, there was this custom of keeping track of these at home with candles. And I guess in modern times, it's you can get rose-colored candles and purple candles. You probably couldn't get a purple candle in... 1300. Yeah, they probably just had normal bees, yeah. you know, beeswax or whatever. So, you know, once there's more modern technology, these things come about. And so people were keeping them at home. And so I think it is true that the Advent wreath began in Lutheran homes. But the idea of keeping track in the... It's a good um, way just to kind of pace yourself through. Yeah, at home. Yeah. At home. I mean, yeah, you see it at church, but it's just a way to bring it home and and let your kids see it. So I don't think like, you know, there's not like a statue of Martin Luther in the middle of it. It's basically just the liturgical season. Right. The fact that it's liturgical at all, like for uh, most Americans that were raised Baptist or like Church of Christ that have so little traditions, it seems so very like it's like a step into traditional practice to have an right. red wreath so right. you know um anyhow so that's like my upbringing we didn't do i mean we put up a tree after thanksgiving yeah but you were raised baptist yeah we didn't have yeah. a whole lot of those kind of traditions and so we've definitely tried to integrate as many as possible yeah. just to remind the kids it's a spiritual religious time it's not a santa claus mm-hmm. gifts party time so yeah. every way you can do that i think is good